Well, hello, hello. And today in this episode, I'm going to be talking about e-commerce business. Um, so if you have come across the first time here uh, on my channel, thank you so much. Uh, and we haven't met before, by the way, my name is Liz Surya. I'm a tax accountant, but mostly I'm a business advisor. And I have really specialized in the last, I would say more than 10 years in two niches, which is actually, yes, e-commerce, you guessed that right. And also real estate. Those are my two favorite niches where I have actually not only done the talk, but I've done the walk. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and dive in into this episode because i think it's so important so many people ask me constantly uh you know whether or not you know how can they get started and you know i i understand there's a lot of resources out there but sometimes we just want to find the right direction right we agree so let's go ahead and not waste any more time and now get started okay all right so a lot of times what I have been asked by many of my clients throughout so many years, I've been in e-commerce now exactly, I think since 2014. <laughs> so it feels like a long, long time. And I really also saw back then how much future and how much growth e-commerce was gonna uh, go. And I really believe that uh, right now, more than ever, this is one of the greatest uh, business models that you can get into, especially because is really cost effective in the sense where it doesn't require you to have like large amounts of money, right? Um, the traditional type of, um, and I wanna get into this because it's very important, uh, hopefully for you to understand that, you know, we get the traditional where we know we have typical local stores and of course, a lot of big shops and stores have shut down in the last couple of years. Um, but there's a difference, right? There's the brick and mortar business and then we have all these e-commerce business starting. Now, I still believe that, yes, believe it or not, physical stores are still gonna be around for a while, um, even though a lot is shutting down, I understand that, but they will because they still, remember older generations that we still like to touch, we still like to actually physically visit a store. So there are some benefits to that. Uh, but of course, e-commerce is going to continue to expand, expand nonstop. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Uh, the e-commerce business that I really feel that based, again, in my experience and what I have seen through my clients, it's definitely Amazon, it's definitely eBay, and then a third is Shopify, right? So let's clear that. Shopify is nothing more than a platform that you pay a monthly fee, right? And you're able to put your products there for sale, right? I'm um, part of the what I'm calling this, the e-commerce um, business for Amazon and eBay and Shopify. And the next one is gonna be an FAQ, my next part with e this e-commerce business. And there I'm gonna be answering a lot of questions that I usually get from my own clients who are very concerned about Talk about taxes, right? What about sales taxes? What about nexus? I'm sure you've been hearing about that kind of stuff. And here's the thing, that's a separate tax, right? Separate to income taxes, all right? So this one, you know, you need to be very cautious because depending where you have nexus and what the hell is nexus list? Okay, so nexus, to make it very simple, is nothing more than what's called economical presence, right? If you have done some research, there was a big major case that we had way back in June of 2018. And that kind of opened the can of worms. That's what happened with online sellers. Prior to that, when I was helping other clients, there were barely anybody was paying any sales tax. <laughs> I mean, there was barely anybody except if you were in your home state. So if you were in your state, most people that were selling, yes, they were paying that only sales tax. But now after June of 2018, Everything has drastically changed, and I really believe it's going to get a little worse before it gets even better at any given time. Because remember one thing, right now, most businesses have suffered so much and they have shut down, right? Because it's not worth for them to support and continue paying the rent. So what's happening? All of you who are coming online, right? You technically taking away customers from all these brick and mortar, you know, businesses. They're shutting down and the city is saying, scratching their heads, hey, there you, 
um, if they're going out of business, we need to get paid somewhere from sales tax, right? So that's where you come in. So again, I really believe there's so many softwares out there. So I'm sure you've heard of Tax Yard. It's one of the most popular ones. I think they do a very good service, by the way. Um, I know, for an example, one of the things that we do in my firm is that we definitely help a lot of, you know, again, if you're over the threshold of 20000 by all means, feel free to reach out because what we're doing is to help a lot of small sellers is do what is called a, a sales and nexus checkup. And that is where we actually look at every single uh, platform that you're selling. So if you're selling eBay and Amazon, we go into those accounts and we actually do an analysis of where you have that nexus. Okay. And wherever you have it, that's what we recommend for you to actually get registered in that state and really start collecting sales tax remember for your customer and then paying um out to these states because you're going to say well liz i have amazon and ebay they do doing all that for me no they're not all they're doing is collecting the money for you and by the way they're not doing it for every state neither they yes they're adding every single year absolutely i think that's great news but they're not the one who's submitting the taxes for you they're just collecting and I can assure you they didn't even want to do that. They were actually obligated by the states to do it. You don't, you don't understand how many times they tried to back off, but they had no choice. All right. So now, why do I say the 20,000 threshold and when you need to get professional help? Very simple. Because these platforms, okay, have a regulation that any private seller over $20,000 of gross incomes or 200 transactions they have to issue you a tax form now that tax form that they're giving you they submitted to you at the beginning of january usually before january 31st every year that gets a copy into your revenue that's how they know how you're selling okay so if you try and figure out that's exactly how they know so if you decide to skip it and not say oh i'm not going to pay taxes that's how they get you all right so i don't want you to get in trouble what i want you is to be successful stay in business not go out of business and you know by the way if you haven't seen i have a, a playlist and i have many other videos and and, and different podcasts like i said episodes where i really go a lot more in depth about really a breakdown of what really sales taxes and nexus and the different things that are happening around so somewhere around here you can actually see one of my other uh videos or even the playlist if you want to go into that because i think that there's nothing more important than we're going to any type of business to really have a good financial education of what we're getting involved. Because I believe if you can avoid a problem, why not do it, right? Wouldn't you? I mean, I know that if I know that, you know, there's something's going to create a problem, if I can avoid it, I'm going to avoid it. I mean, it's not worth it. And like I said, what you think you're saving now, it's going to way cost you a lot more at the long term. So anyway, going back. So eBay, Amazon, absolutely. I love it. I think it's a great way of getting started in e-commerce. I have seen so many success stories with so many of my clients, and I really believe it's a great way to get started. Now, let's, get, let's say for an example that you're doing well, right? And you say, okay, Liz, I'm finally doing twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, right? And now what's the next step for me? And by the way, when I say these amounts, I'm talking about monthly. <laughs> um, so if you are doing more than 20000 per month already in gross income, remember, you have your cost of goods, you have all the products that you have to deduct, how much it costs you, your freight, also your advertisement, your marketing, everything that you're doing, right, to attract those customers, then you want to do Shopify because I always believe that with Shopify, you're going to have better control over your store. Remember, this is your store. This is your account. So you can be able to make a lot better financially than having to share so much money of your percentage, you know, and give away to, you know, Amazon, eBay. So, but again, I would think that the best thing is to get started with these two platforms. And then finally, you can have Shopify on the side, right? And they built a little bit there. I always believe you never want to count with one platform ever, because what happens if they shut down? Think about that for a moment. What will happen? Your business stops. I don't want that to happen to you, to anybody, 
All right. So we always have to look at that we are borrowing their marketplace. That's what's called marketplace, right? So you want to be very cautious about that. And, and by the way, before I even forget, if you you know, so far you have got some value from everything that I have shared with you, please, you know, hit the thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because it helps me obviously to continue giving all this great content throughout all my episodes. And like I say, I have a playlist. I have a lot of other videos that can help you to really grow forward. Like I say, I do e-commerce business as an accountant, and that's important for you to know. Um, because I think that we find a lot of information out there, but sometimes the person who's talking about the subject or the topic, they're really not that expert in it. They just have read an article or maybe they watch someone else's video and they, you know, they start recording uh, and sharing the same information. So I think I want you to be very cautious in the things that you do. But like I say, just one, number one, get a good product, something simple, something light, okay? Nothing is gonna be health hazardous or anything like that. Keep away from vitamins and obviously, you know, things like that. They're so competitive right now. Um, I know there's certain categories that you wanna keep away from. So do your research before you really make a move. Um, and then secondly, like I said, make sure that you get to have, you know, your Amazon store set up where it's collecting the sales tax. Because remember, what you don't collect, you pay out of pocket. Let me repeat that. Well, you don't collect, you get to pay out of your pocket. Yeah, that means getting out of the little profit that you're making. Because I know your margins can be really tight and they can be really low depending on the product that you have. And again, the more competition, the less profits you're making, right? Um, so make sure, like I said, number one, you choose a good product, do the valuation, do the research. Once you have that, great. Then go ahead and then put in eBay or platform. You got drop shipping that you can do with eBay too. Uh, listen, to me, I, a lot of people are not in favor completely with eBay. I like eBay also. I think their fees are more reasonable. Um, they, you know, it's a different platform, you know, we're not going to compare apples with oranges, right? Um, but it's a nice way of getting started there, okay? And people have a very misconception thinking that eBay was more like a, kind of like a flea market online, <laughs> um, use, you know, uh, items, and that's no longer true. A lot of people are doing so well with eBay, so it might be something for you to contemplate, during the process, especially if you haven't got started with Amazon, something to think about. Now, if you're ready to go Amazon, then great for you. Go for it. Jump in and do it. But again, again, validate the product. Okay, keep away from anything that is what? A big size, anything that's fragile, and anything that's going to weigh too much. Or anything that's going to be health hazardous. <laughs> so you want to keep away from all that stuff. And then, you know what? I tell people... Ali, you know, AliExpress is phenomenal. You can buy it in smaller quantities, right? And they do the same things, Alibaba. Actually, they, they, as you probably know, they're the same company. Um, but you can, you can purchase in smaller quantities, which is nice because maybe, again, it's all about testing. It's all about knowing, is this going to be a good product for me to sell? You know, why order a minimum 1,000, you know, in quantity if you're going to, not sell it, you know? So I always tell people, be cautious. So number one, that. Number two, like I said, make sure that you have already your Amazon or eBay store set up where it's already collecting the sales tax, okay? Because remember, Nexus is economical. So I don't care what state you're in. If you're selling to another state and you already have met the threshold per state, which means Anything, usually the majority of states, and by the way, it's a variation, but the majority of states, they tell you if you sell more than $20,000, yes, per year, or you have more than 200 transactions, which could be easily, because if you're selling a really affordable item, 200 transactions in a year is nothing. I mean, you can do that probably in a month. You know, in a week maybe, depending on the product that you have. So do you see how, what's the exposure there? So a lot of people have a misconception. You have an exposure. And these are the states, by the way, that are where it tells you 20,000 or, that's the magic word I always say, or, O-R, okay? Some actually tells you N200. And others have lower transactions or less tra thresholds. 
And I'm gonna give you a golden nugget right now that a lot of people don't know. There are some states, and I'm gonna share right now one of them, that if you're saying, well, this I don't have to worry about it, you know, I'm less than 200 transactions, and I don't think I'm gonna reach 20,000, uh, well, watch out. <laughs> watch out, because right now, the state of Kansas, that's right, you heard me right, Kansas. Kansas State, they don't care if you sold $1 or one item. That's right, you heard me right, you're gonna pay sales tax. So if you have not turned on an Amazon or eBay to collect Kansas, you can get in trouble, all right? Now, are they gonna go after you for a buck? I doubt it, or for one item, or even for a few. But hey, is it worth the headache? Nope, it's not worth the headache. And I tell people, you don't have to register in every state. By all means, you do not have to register in every state. Uh, it would be crazy for you to do that. Always just make sure that you track, like I said, through Amazon and eBay, how many quantities you're selling. And like I said, once you see that 200 threshold, look at the state, their regulations, because every state varies, like I said, okay? So there's a list of, you know, that hopefully somewhere you can find it, and especially with tax year, I know they have a list where it tells you every state exactly their, you know, the guidelines to how you can meet that nexus. And once you do, make sure you set up and TaxR can help you with that too. But one of the things that I can help you, especially in my team, is doing, like I said, what's called Nexus Sales Tax Checkup, where we go into your stores and we analyze who, what state you have an exposure. Depending on the state, that's the one that we would recommend you to go ahead and register and then start paying your taxes, right? Um, so that's one of the things that we do. And like I said, I always believe that once you reach, you know, a certain gross amount, you really do not want to be doing the record keeping. You really do not want to be guessing if you're paying the right sales taxes. Um, and again, your income taxes, right? Remember, uh, if you're sole proprietorship, meaning that you're one person and you have maybe just, you know, you're using your regular name as, as an individual and, and when you set up your accounts in Amazon or eBay, that's considered sole proprietorship. That means that everything is gonna go into your federal taxes, right, your income tax through a Schedule C, right? That's where you're gonna deduct all your expenses also. But it's very important that you understand that as a sole proprietorship, you also have a tax implication. What is that list? Tax implication, what I mean is that you are required really to pay quarterly taxes. Oh, that's right, you heard me right. Remember that when you're an employee, a W-2, your employer takes all the Social Security and Medicare for you, right? So if you made $500 in a week, gross, you don't get a 500 check. You get a minus all this taxes, right? You have to pay federal taxes, Social Security, and your Medicare. So now you don't have an employer. You are the employer and you are the employee almost in the company. So now you have to make sure that you set aside that money to when you need to pay taxes, okay? Now what I highly recommend, again, anybody really to pay on a quarterly basis, less headaches. I mean, I, I, you know, is Uncle Sam going to come behind you, knock on your door and say, give me some money because you haven't paid me quarterly? Of course not. Um, but again, if you're a small store and you make less than $50,000, yeah, probably you won't have that much of a risk, but it can still happen. I've seen it. So <laughs> don't think that you're immune to not having to have uh, internal revenue. And by the way, they're never going to call you. They're never going to email you. They're always going to say you what they're going to send you what I call a love letter, <laughs> and a love letter means hey, we want our money, come and pay us. <laughs> so, and when you get those letters, they're not very nice, by the way. So again, I just want you to avoid headaches that sometimes they can be, you know, prevented. And as long as you're doing it correctly, and this is why you always want to reach out uh, to people who really understand the laws because it's something that. Well, as I said earlier, if you're cutting corners and thinking you're saving money, it's going to cost you a lot more in the long term. So again, I hope my information has been valuable. And like I said, what I'm going to do right before we, uh, if you stay until the end of the, the episode is I am going to be um, sharing um, one of the videos where, again, I go really deeper into the sales tax and how it really functions. But right now, I do believe this is a great opportunity. It's going to continue to be and if you haven't noticed, this is a part of what's called the three passive income 
evergreen series. So this is a special series and sequence that I'm creating for people to really start thinking out of the box and start creating some really, you know, independent income on the side. Because I always say that a job is great, but it's never, never permanent. Okay. So if you're working good for you, I hope you're savvy enough with your money, but I can tell you right now, you always want to have a side business no matter what, because as an employee, you're never going to be able to deduct the taxes that belongs to an entrepreneur, right? So always be smart about that. Even if you have a little, you know, side hustler, as we call it, Get yourself an e-commerce business, get started. You don't know you can start today and maybe six months from now, you're making $1,000, which is gonna be sufficient to replace your salary and then start working on your own. And I really do believe that, you know what, once you become really an entrepreneur, it's like this burning desire that you get inside that now you discover that you don't need to exchange your time for money, you are able to exchange your knowledge right? And your wisdom to actually make money. Okay. So there's a big difference with that folks. So anyhow, like I said, um, I'm going to be sharing some other links and everything else. And like I said, anything we can help you with, please feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, I've been in YouTube for a long time and I also have a podcast and I love helping people to do the right thing because Again, the potential is there, but you need to be cautious when you start businesses, no matter what size they are, there's always going to be implications, like I say, of, you know, bookkeeping, there's going to be implications of, like I say, income taxes, right, to internal revenue. And now the biggest headache is state taxes, okay? And believe me, they can find you if you think you can hide, you can run, but you can't hide from them. I can assure you from everything I have learned from so many clients. So I wish you a lot of success and I want you to move forward. And like I said, I'm going to do a second part of this series and it's going to be really an FAQ of what clients have asked me about, you know, to really understand when, you know, when is it time to really to, to, to get started with, you know, registering with states and things like that. And I think it's going to help you a lot to move the needle. And, and again, I always want the best for each one of you. Make sure, like I said, just to be cautious. That's all it is. You know, hey, I want you to make a lot of money. But remember, we have to pay a share, whether we like it or not. Um, I know I do. So, you know, I just don't want you to get caught because if they do, they can shut you down. And then, you know, it would be a waste of your time. I don't want that to happen. So anyhow, I wish you a lot of success. And like I said, stay out, stay tuned because we are going to be doing another video in that next video. And by the way, this one, again, this is, uh, I'm going to be sharing this link again, at betterlimonadestand.com uh, forward slash what is e-commerce. It's really good. It talks about what kind of e-commerce business you can get started, uh, you know, whether you're selling, you know, all the way from products. Um, it could be t-shirts, like I said, there can be so many ideas that you can do. Um, and one of the best part about this one is that, you know, you can, you know, a lot of times, and another thing I have told some, some of my new, um, you know, starters is uh, people say, how can I really avoid a sales tax? Well, stay tuned. I would discuss that on the next episode, right? Anyhow, wish you the best. And like I said, this is Lister again, your tax accountant and e-commerce accountant and, like I said, stay positive and, uh, and always, always do your homework because it's just going to avoid some headaches. Okay. Thank you so much. And I'll be seeing you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Take care.